this has been textured the same as the te this has been textured with a texture paint and then I put one coat of the copper coating B. So now we're ready for our second coat. What we're going to do is we're going to put on the coating and then I'm going to put a patina on very quickly afterwards. And how I do it on this particular one, I'm going to mist it on. And it, how I mist it is really, really important. This is the mister bottle uh, that we use here at Sculpt Nouveau. But this has a very fine mist to it. Uh, and that's very important because you can't, once I've put the coating on here, the metal coating B, copper, uh, I, I only have a little time to put the mist on and I have to mist it very quickly. You don't want to put a lot of mist on. You want just a little bit over that surface. The roller that I'm going to use today uh, to put on the metal coating, this is a very small one, and it's microfiber, so it's actually a cloth. So it has kind of a weavy a pattern that it puts onto the metal, and that's good, or onto the surface with the metal, uh, because that'll keep the patina from dripping. So the roller that you use is very important. This is uh, the microfiber. Uh, I've used this for a couple days now and I put it in a plastic bag when I'm through so I can reuse it again and again. Uh, it'll still do what I want it to do. And uh, I'm on a textured surface as opposed to a smooth surface. When I go to the next one I'm going to show you the smooth surface and I'll change rollers. Okay, here we go. It isn't as important of the angle that you roll with this particular one because of all the texture that I've got already, so that's not a factor. Okay, now we're ready to put the patina on. I usually wait from three to five minutes. This is such a small area, I'm probably not going to have to do that. Again, you want to have an incredibly fine mist. You want to hold it at least 12 inches away. If you get too close, what happens is too much liquid goes out on there and it drips. And what you're going to do, what I'm going to do is pass it across really quickly. And that right there is about all you're going to need. You can already see the patina starting to form, and I didn't tell you what patina. This is my light green patina. It's a very strong patina and it works very quickly. But if you were going to do anything to the surface, you'd want to leave it go overnight. 24 hours is always good. So the plating room. On our second half, we're going to again do the same rolling as we did the last time, but instead of using a mister bottle, I'm going to use a foam roller. You have to get the tight foam roller, okay? And you don't want a lot of liquid in it, and we're going to run that over the top of it. Now, you don't want it dripping. So if you think it's going to drip, I sometimes have a terry cloth, and I'll run the terry cloth over it like this just to make sure that I get some of the liquid out, or that you can use your tray and roll it in your tray and get some of the liquid out. Now sometimes I'll roll and mist too. I'll do both. If I've got a textured surface, I can get away with that pretty easily. Okay, so you you lightly roll over this. With the roller, you're only actually going to get the patina on the top surface. You're only going to get the top parts and the bottom is going to show as uh, copper. Now, if you don't want that, then you can mist it. We'll go ahead and mist it. And, and where I've mist it, it will be lighter than what you're going to see on here. The cheaper the wrap, the better when it comes to this kind of thing, which is called a vapor patina. And again, I move it around. 
you want some pockets, you want it, some of it against the surface and you want some not against the surface because you want kind of a pattern This is 24 hours after we did this. Uh, this is the top one. Remember, I misted it on there. Uh, it's pretty even. Now, you're not seeing any copper. Uh, I'm going to take away a little of the patina on the top surface here and expose some of the copper and leave the patina in the recesses. And I'll just do it on one side so you'll get a chance to see what that looks like. Here's where, remember, I rolled and then I missed it slightly. I didn't have to miss, but I did. Uh, and then I put the saran wrap over the top and you can see you get really nice patterns and you still have little areas where you see some copper. Okay, and now I haven't done any seal coat on this. I normally probably am going to put a seal coat on these. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, this is probably okay the way it is, but I, on some kind of a uh, wall that is probably going to be on, there's going to be people touching it or something like that. So I would more than likely spray it with lacquer, which we'll do in a few minutes. And that's going to make everything darker. It's going to intensify all of the colors. But first I'll take a little bit away from this area here so you can kind of get an idea of what it's like if, it, if you wanted to see a little more copper. Here's okay. a scotch right and I have some water on it. Uh, normally I'd use a gray, but I, I have, I'm going to use the green today. I'm just going to rub over that surface just a little bit. And I'll start exposing just a little bit of the metal. So if you want to see more of the metal, this is what you would do. And I'll blot it out. Egg. So that when it dries, now you're going to see just a little bit more of the copper. And if you wanted more, you would just continue with the Scotch Brite and you would pull up even more. This uh, was the, if you remember, the textured piece finished. Uh, and then after we let it sit for 24 hours, remember I came back in with a Scotch Brite and pulled off some of the patina in this air, area. Uh, as opposed to the other side, uh, the right side here, and now we're going to shoot some uh, clear guard on top. I'm going to spray this on the bottom section. We're going to spray the yellow on next. Wait, it's going to be a big contrast. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is just do a final review of these. This panel here with the four parts to it. Uh, first one, remember this whole top part uh, was misted on after we rolled on the copper. Uh, and then the second panel, remember we uh, put the copper on and then we used a roller with the patina in it. And after I rolled, I slightly misted it just so I would get a little bit more because when you roll it, you're only hitting the top surface, okay, if you have a textured surface. Uh, so I wanted to get just a little bit more of the green in the recesses, although you still see a lot of the copper. Uh, so I misted it with, uh, with the, again, the light green. And then I remember I put the saran wrap over this whole thing. Okay. What I decided to do on, this, on these little sections here, this top section, uh, I used our patina spray and I used black and green. So I put the black on first, just a little bit, and then the green over the top. Um, uh, or maybe it was vice versa. I think I put the green on first and the black over the top here. Uh, and then on the bottom one, I used uh, brown 
yellow and green. So I put the green on first, yellow on second, and then brown on third. What I want to do is just show you a contrast between what it looked like and what it could look like, depending on what you want to do to it. I also sprayed both of these with uh, clear guard lacquer. In fact, I sprayed the whole panels with clear guard after I was finished. The patina lacquer is strong, but I always recommend that you put a clear coat over the top of a patina, uh, a patina stain uh, after you've done it on anything that you're going to do it on.